Hi, welcome back to the channel. This video is a live customization of the Kanjo SJ. It'll probably be quite long. I think it's only worth watching if you're quite seriously thinking of getting this car. All I've done to the car at the moment is paint it neutral grey and put my number plate on it so we have a blank canvas. I did find this Craft A racing version online and I think one day I will build it. But for today I wanted to build something else and I couldn't find any other inspiration. So I'm putting myself in the head of a young person who's bought this car in order to take part in the occasional track day, but also to do it up a little bit to be able to show it to their friends to take it to car meets and car shows etc. This car will mainly sit in a collection for me so I'm not going to spend money on the armour or the brakes. Let's start to take a look through the bumpers. So that's the standard bumper and we'll see what else is available. I'm hoping for a little bit of a, a splitter perhaps for light track use and for showing off to friends. But I can't see any sort of splitter at the moment. That looks quite nice. Could I imagine somebody putting that on? I'm not too sure. Let's look at the back so we can see what we're doing. Oh, oh those are horrible. No. Some of those app, oh, that's ridiculous. No, I don't want a lot of those on there. That is for sure. I don't mind the small painted extension. Okay, so let's think about a fairly stock back bumper. We'll go back to the front bumper and try to make our mind up. Or maybe even, no, let's go down and look at the skirts. Because of course, at the end of the day, we want the bottom of the car to all be sort of homogeneous. Well, the skirts are quite subtle and you can have painted or not painted, so that's good to know. Back to the front bumper again. Well I have been thinking about track days of course and that tuna bumper did appeal because it's got the tow hook, it's got the exposed intercooler, it's got the sort of thing I think a young person might like to do on this car if they were modifying it. The other ones they don't seem to be much of anything. I don't particularly want a front number plate if I don't have to. So again, the drift, drift sorry, bumper with intercooler. I think I'm going to go with that one. Now, if I go with that one, it's got black on the bottom, so I'll keep black on the bottom of everything else. And there really isn't anything here with black on the bottom that isn't anything other than vile, to be honest. Looks like there's some sort of discount this week on the underbonnet stuff. I don't really tend to do the underbonnet stuff. I think we're mainly throwing money away. I will put a stage four engine tune on. I do that basically for almost every car, just anyway. But looking through the exhausts, I would tend to think this one would have quite a big single exhaust. It's what you normally see on these Japanese cars that are modified. So the chrome big bore, I think that looks really good. I'm also tempted by that, maybe the, the, the chrome tuner exhaust. I don't really like those titanium blue things, but that looks quite good, but I don't know, I am tempted, I think, yeah, we go with the big chrome one and we'll move on. Fenders, well, some look like it's been to the scrapyard and some just look weird, those cutouts I don't like, I'm not going to have any fenders. Hood catches, no, yeah, we could well use hood catches to be honest, but let's look at what hoods are available. Leafing through, I can see these dinker hoods and they have a little grill in the front of them, very similar to the real car. So to me, they're already the most likely ones. The vents are the sort of aftermarket hood type vents. In my imagining, this does not have necessarily an aftermarket hood. I probably should go with the secondary, but I'm going with carbon because I just like the look of that slightly more. Now, a car like this, designed to do the odd track day, would definitely have some upgraded seats. The question is, how upgraded? Something like this, or do we go on down the list until we reach the torture devices that are fitted typically to race cars? Well, I think some of these are going too far. The carbon-backed type seats look very good. These tuner seats, etc. I don't like the green seat belts. There's not many colours. Green will go with, red goes with, all sorts of things. So they're what I am going to ultimately pick. Steering wheels are often changed. So just go for a basic steering wheel with the paint or the tape wrapped around the top. I think that's fine. 
There are other things available like door panels. I'm not going to do those, all the other racing dashes. I think they're all just going a little bit beyond the spec that I'm going for. Of course, if you're going to build a race car, then some of these are really worth putting in as well. As far as lights go, I'm going to leave the standard lights. You could also have the xenons because a lot of people upgrade the bulbs. Let's have a good look at the liveries, even though I'm probably not going to have one. So the stripes are quite subtle. Uh, shopping list, you can imagine that on a, on a number of track cars, actually. Not sure about the waves. Well, some of these are quite pretty, though. Channel X. Now this, this one is very important. If you put yellow instead of grey, you've got the Spoons livery. Spoons, the uh, Japanese racing car uh, team. So the fact they put that in there is fantastic. I'm not sure if Spoons ever raced specifically a Civic Coupe, but you certainly have got a great livery there. On the mirrors, I'm just looking at a photo on my phone and this sort of shape mirror is actually what the car has. So I'm thinking of it being painted. Oh, those look funny. So let's go back to the GT mirrors in primary. They look great. Number plate, just pick a colour that you think will go with your colour. I'm not going to paint the car yet. I'm going to look at everything else first. Now the roll cage is, of course, for track car or race car builds. A half cage, that's typically what I imagine this car to have. But I see we can have padded full cages. Um, so full race car builds are definitely on the cards. Yeah, that's a little bit too much, you see, with the bars at the front. So let's go secondary on the cage and then we can make sure that's painted in a black colour. For the roof, roof fins. I, mm, you could, I mean, you could have a roof spoiler on the car. I'm not sure that's what I want. When it comes to the roof of the car, typically people would weld up the sunroof if it was, if it was on there. So perhaps I should go for the primary, although I've actually left it stock in the end, the glass one. Side panel. Oh, now this is good. This means we can paint that side trim, which is often done on the higher levels of car. Definitely go primary on the side trim. That's huge. I'm pleased with that. Skirts. Okay. We've had a little look through the skirts already. There's nothing overly extreme. So I've left that stock. Oh, split. Splitters is what I wanted in the first place. I didn't realise the splitters would be in splitters, not in the bumpers. Now this puts a completely different complexion on the build, so never be afraid to go back. That tuna splitter looks quite decent. I, I don't like the little the little rods. The arc splitter looks too modern for the car. That's that's too much. The street one actually wasn't bad either. Okay, there's a few decisions to be made here. That's a lot of choice. Well, I do think that one does look about the best. It does suit the aesthetic of what I'm trying to build, so that is going on. Now, of course, now that's painted, I need to go for a painted skirt. I'm going to go for a slightly extended one to match the front splitter. And now I need to go back to the back bumper, of course, and get rid of the black on that. So even just the painted bumper, that's pretty good. The tuna bumper, oh, that's I think that's perfect. A slight extension with a cutout for the rather oversized exhaust. I like that. This is coming on, even in, uh, even in grey it's looking quite good. Well, moving on to spoilers. They give the car a traction benefit, it's saying. We definitely want one. I think I would expect this build to have one. But which one? I mean, that tail spoiler doesn't look too bad. The track spoiler doesn't. 
The drift spoiler looks quite nice. It does actually have a kick up at the back. You can see it actually working as a spoiler. That one there is a reference to quite a lot of other Japanese cars that had that style of spoiler. The racer spoiler and the performance spoiler, I think are just too big for the intended use. So going back through again, I say I like the subtle lip and the tail spoiler. I'm thinking of, no, I don't know, I'll go on down a bit more again. That's actually rather nice, the, the track one. And I still like the drift spoiler. I do think that that suits rather well. It also has the sort of look that I would expect on a car of that age. Could go with sun strips. I mean, a young person may well put a sun strip on the car. I don't think I'm going to, though. If it had some writing on it, maybe I would. So, it's, oh no, that's silly. I was looking at the suspension, but competition is ridiculous. Even if the car handles better on that, which it does sometimes on a tuner car, I'm not having that ridiculous look. So the lowest suspension other than that was fine. And for the windows, I'd have them lightly smoked. Now we get on to the wheels and the paint, the real important stuff. I know there's a lot of nice wheels in the street category in the non-high profile tyre selection. I'm looking, ideally, I think I'd like a chromed lip, something to stand out, and then something nice in the centre in colour. Those look nice. I mean, they're not a chromed lip, but they look nice. Those are not right. Those are not right. Those are very Japanese. Again, it's not the chrome lip I was thinking of, but that is a nice style. I quite like the endos on there, to be honest. Those work pretty well. Oh, I like those. Those Cosmos. I'm a sucker for that sort of BBS inner style of wheel, and I think that mixed with that chrome is superb. In fact, I'm going to go for those. I'm not even going to go through any other wheels. I'm happy with those. I haven't chosen the car colour yet, so I probably shouldn't choose the paint colour for the wheels. So let's go on the car colour. Let's just start flipping through and see what suits the car. The white does, but I want to stay away from that uh, white on a Honda Civic. It's used so much. I have been thinking about a blue, to be honest. None of the blues there quite did it for me. There's always the possibility of a crew blue, of course, although that... Actually, this is quite nice, the dark blue. I have seen a dark blue one on the internet and thought it looked good. So there's a possibility there. I won't be doing a crew colour because it won't work on this video. No, no, not that. In fact, I'm not sure about any of those greens particularly. Yellow's OK. Still not grabbed. I want it to be, I say, quite classy. The person who built this car did have an eye to what they're doing. They weren't just going for the showiest thing in the world. The red wasn't bad. Quite like that, uh, the stone silver, I think it was, when it went by. Shadow silver, that's actually rather nice as well. That little bit of blue works. The silver's okay. But I think the slightly darker silver is like the dark steel here. I think that dark steel looks very good. Good enough that we'll go down into metallic where it looks slightly better and we'll put that on. I think that's a great colour. Now for pearlescent, you can of course put an ice white or a frost white and they are the cheapest option. I quite like the little bits of blue and I think I'll put on this diamond blue. Now how much blue we'll really get from that is debatable but it just makes the paint slightly different to popping a normal white pearl on. I'm leaving classic black as the secondary. Ah, we're getting uh, trim colours doing all of the seats. Well, I don't think I want showy off red seats on the car. I can't really think of a specific colour for the seats. I think something like graphite or anthracite black or black. Any of these sort of colours are absolutely fine for the seat. I've gone black steel, but it doesn't really matter. Now I've painted the car. I can think about the colour for the centre of those wheels, and I'm pretty certain already I want them gold. Now my little hint here would always be, and that's black, it looks okay. If you want gold, it's always a bit too gold to select gold. So if you want gold, I normally say, go with dark copper. It just seems to look that bit classier, that much better when you want a gold wheel, so that's what we'll pick. And that's it. 
she's done, but not quite, not quite. I realised after I filmed part one, I didn't really want such a contrasting number plate and I'd completely forgotten the hood pins, not to mention there was a lot of reflection from the roll cage. So back in to tweak it on the hood pins, when you look through, some of them are very overstated and some of them are just silly colors that aren't gonna work. So the chromed hood latches are going on. As far as the secondary goes, I'm going to change it from the classic black that it is now and I'm going to move that into a matte black to remove the reflection although as I select it there's hardly any difference. I'm wondering whether I've even got this right that is the secondary colour. As we flip through it is it's just that even in matte they do reflect a bit unfortunately. And just a quick change on the number plate I so often go for this black and yellow just because it shows up less and now it really is completed. Well, this really was one just for the prospective hardcore Kanjo SJ owner. So I don't know if even a single person is watching at this stage. If you are, I'm amazed. But as always, thank you so much for watching.